Hi there guys, welcome back. This is Dull Cape Tutorial here and I am once again back with another Soul Cinema 4D tutorial. So, uh, we're going to be learning to uh, do something creative and interesting. This time it's going to be a logo review. So let me just show you what we're going to be creating. So uh, that's a pretty cool uh, logo animation or uh, reveal that we or text reveal that we have over there, and we're going to be using the inheritance effect, the matrix object, and simple basic uh, masking techniques uh, to achieve this effect. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is change your render settings to 1280 by 720. You guys can change it to 1080p, but I would like to keep it at 720 for the speed rendering. And it uh, doesn't make much of a difference in 1080p anyways. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go and grab a uh, text spline. <coughs> or actually, let's delete that. Let's choose a uh, mo graph and a uh, mo text. And then we want to choose the alignment to middle and uh, we want to choose a font. So I'm just going to call this uh, devil cube for now. You guys can put in whatever names you want. And I'm going to go and choose some random font. Uh, for the purpose of the tutorial, so uh, let me just try uh, something like that. Like say, let's try Moonshiner. I don't know. I think we want a pretty big font, so I'm gonna go and choose something over here, like a blacklisted. Okay, I think uh, that looks uh, really nice. You know this type of font, and we can change the horizontal spacing to say something like 20. You know, actually, I don't want to use this one. I want to use a uh, Let's see, uh, let's try Abram Lincoln. No, uh, come on, agency FB. Let's do that. Uh, regular, no, we want a thick font. So, okay, I'm, for this purpose, I'm just gonna go use choose a bell gothic and I'm gonna set the horizontal spacing back to 10. So, okay, I think I'm gonna reduce that to zero. Okay, so we have our text over here. Now, uh, the next step is we want to go and grab a cube. And we want to go into the front view for this effect. And now what we're going to do is we want to increase the length and the width of the cube so it covers the whole thing, pretty much like that. And uh, I'm going to go and set the rotation of this cube on the banking to 30 degrees, so we have something that looks like that. And I'm just going to increase it so that it kind of covers the whole text. Perfect. Uh, I'm just going to go and set this uh, Y position. Oops. I'm going to go and set this Y orientation to zero. And then we're going to go increase this and boom. There we go. We have some nice uh, cube. And I think I'm going to go and just go add to the object settings and uh, I'm going to set Z to say something like uh, 30. I don't know. And I'm going to go add to the Motex. I'm going to change the caps to fill a cap. And I'm going to set uh, the steps to say something like 3 and the radius to uh, 3 as well. 3 by 3, okay. Uh, if you go back to a perspective view, we have something like this. The cube is covering the whole thing. Uh, we want to make sure that this cube is covering the entire text. So we want to set the Z to say something like 50. So it covers the whole text. Okay, and I'm just going to go hide the cube and we can have a look at the bevels that are over here of the text. Uh, I think I'm going to go into the Motex and I'm going to reduce the uh, radius up down to 2 and to 2. We can increase the steps, give it like 5 steps, make it more smooth and round. Uh -huh. Okay, something I think that looks pretty good. Cool. Okay, I like it. Okay, so now we want to go is we want to go into our front view by pressing F4 on the keyboard and we want to uncheck this cube. And now we want to do some animation. So I'm going to go and change my frame rate, sorry, my number of frames to 250 because we want a pretty big uh, animation for this. And I'm going to go and choose the Boolean object. So what is a Boolean object? Boolean object is an object that helps us to cut two objects and intersect them. So let me just show you what I mean. So I'm just going to drag in the cube first and then I'm going to drag the motex first. Now, uh, what actually is supposed to happen is the cube is supposed to cut this devil cube that's over here. But that's not happening is because we want this motex to be a completely editable object. So I'm going to make a copy of that. I'm going to press Alt G on the keyboard and I'm going to just going to rename this backup and I'm going to double click on the traffic light on the top and the bottom so it hides it from the viewer and the render region. And I'm going to take click on the motex. I'm going to hit C on the keyboard to make it editable. 
and now we have these uh, bunch of uh, uh, extrude nerves and all that. So I'm going to select all. I'm going to press C again to delete it, to, to make it editable. And I'm going to select here. And I'm going to select, okay, so I'm going to go and select all these. I'm going to go right click and I'm going to choose select children. And then what it does, it, it selects all these uh, roundings, but it does not select the cap. So we're going to go and choose right click and choose uh, select children again. And then you're going to go right click and choose connect objects plus delete. So now that makes it a single um, uh, text. So I'm just going to go and name this text. So now, as you can see here, if you check in the viewport, there is nothing there. Now we can see only the cube in the perspective view, but we want it to be the other way around. So we want to go and interchange this. So now we have something like this. And it does nothing. So how do we make the text visible? So if I go back to our front view, and if I just take the cube, and I'm going to click on this button over here which says the coordinate system it changes it to z axis so when it is in this mode it means it is using the axis of the object but if i click on this it changes the axis to the the z uh, the, the whole world perspective and then when i move it you can slowly see the letters that's being revealed if i go back to our perspective view just check that out we can see it kind of a you know it's it's like cutting through the thing so that's what a boolean object does uh, it's pretty cool i know this is pretty cool. Uh, so <clears throat> what do we want to do is we want to go and keyframe this. So let's go into our front view. We're going to go to frame zero and we want to make sure that it is completely hidden. Say like that. And we want to go and click on a keyframe on the X for the cube. Sorry, not the size. We want to go and uh, control click on the X parameter. And then we want to go to, okay, let's actually set this to zero because it's centered out. Let's uh, control click and click. But and if you're using R16 or R17, you can just click instead of holding control click to create a keyframe. And then we want to go to 200 frames, and then we want to go and move this aside to the side uh, completely till it is completely visible. Okay. And we're going to click a stopwatch again. So now if we go back to our perspective view, and uh, let's just zoom back and see the animation that we have. Let me go back to frame zero. And now if I play. You can see the letter just slowly starts coming, coming, uh, you know, coming. Okay, there, that was a little, there's a problem over there. Uh, so uh, we can just fix that. So I'm just going to remove the bool and I'm going to go here and I'm going to go just take this cube and uh, increase the size Z to a probably a hundred. And then let's put this back again and let's go and play this thing again. Okay, I seriously do not know why that thing is okay. Looks like it's not happening. So probably if you guys use a different font, it will work out probably. Uh, okay, anyways, uh, so I, th I think I'm, I'm just gonna go here and uh, change. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to a polygon mode. Okay, I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna go choose all polygons and I'm gonna right click and choose subdivide. Let's see if that, okay, not subdivide, I think. Let's go right click and choose optimize. And now let's try and see if it works. Oops, okay. Okay, uh, we still have the problem, but uh, I think it's not gonna be of any issue for you guys. So let me just go to that frame and Okay, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll just chalk that, okay. Now, the beauty of this animation is that I'm going to control the whole thing with just two keyframes. And those two keyframes are the keyframes I already just did. So, the keyframes I put on the text, that's it. Those are the only two keyframes. And how? I'm going to show you how. So, now we want to go and create uh, this, the, 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 those red color cubes that we see over here. You, uh, let me just play that and show you. Yeah, so these red color things that you see over here, we're just going to uh, make that transition now. Uh, so let me just bring this down. Okay. Uh, close. Okay. Uh, so how are we going to do that? Simple. Let's go grab a clone. Uh, let's go grab a cube. And I'm going to set this X, Y, Z of this cube to 8 by 8 by 8. Okay. And uh, we just want to add on fillet. And uh, let's give it a radius of 1 and a subdivision of, say, let's say 4. Okay. Uh, that's pretty cool and I, I think i'm going to set that to 10 by 10 by 10 because again it depends on the the height and the weight and height and length of your text okay it's the radius to one okay cool 
Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to go and grab a cloner. So more grab, choose cloner. What does a cloner do? It clones the objects. Perfect. So now if I put this on the cloner, we see it's cloning in this format. But what we want to do is we want to go and uh, into the cloner, we want to go and set the mode to object. Now what it does is it allows us to clone it on an object. So we can take this cube, this text over here and drop it as the object. Okay. And then we see it's all like cloned up on the text. Isn't it? But that's not what we want. We want to go and uh, into the cloner and we want to change the distribution to surface. And then it puts the cubes onto the surface. You get my point? On the surface. But there's a pretty less number of clones, so very less. So we want to go and we want to change that. Let me just close this. I don't this one out. We want to go and change this count to say something like 6,000. And now we can see we have a lot of clones, a lot of clones. So to make this uh, a render faster, there are two things I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to the cloner. I'm going to go choose our render instances. So what render instances does is uh, it, it, it creates a render instance. It creates an instance object, which is over here. And then it takes the data from this cube and then makes it as a render instance. So now if I hit C on the cloner, we can see we have all these render instances, reference objects. Okay. But if, uh, let me just uh, go control Z that, if I go and change this to uncheck render instances and I hit C, so we can see it has made cubes, so more polygon, so more polygon, more the render speed, more the time. So we can go uh, control Z that and we can just choose, click on render instances. And then one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, options over here. I'm going to change the level of detail to low so that we guys can have a faster uh, preview. Uh, okay. So once we have that, uh, we're going to go and uh, add some effect to this. Okay, so we're going to go and make sure the cloner is selected. We want to click on the cloner, go to MoGraph, Effector, and we want to choose Plane Effector. Now once we choose the Plane Effector, boom, something crazy happens. So we want to uncheck our position. Actually, let's set the Y to 0 and everything comes back to normal. And you want to go and check on this visibility parameter. Okay, and then you want to go to Fall Off and we want to choose um linear as the fall off and then we want to go and we want to rotate this like that 90 okay we're, i'm holding down shift to snap it exactly so oh, oh god okay let me go back to my um this model tool i'm going to set this to uh let's say uh, minus 90 and uh we still don't see anything so then i'm just gonna go and duplicate this uh, by, by pressing Control C, Control V. Oops, not that. We want to duplicate the plane. So actually, I'm going to rename this plane to uh, Cubes of Visibility. It's a round spelling, but it's okay. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to go and change this to Cubes. Come on, select. Huh. Uh, we want to change this to Cube uh, Scale. Okay. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to go to the scale option over here and under parameter we want to uncheck visibility we want to uncheck position and we want to choose scale uniform scale and we want to set the scale to uh, minus 1.4 okay so let's work on uh, this one for now so uh, I'm going to go into my perspective view and uh, let's move here I'm going to select both of these plane effectors I'm going to I'm going to press R on the keyboard and I'm just going to rotate this to 30 degrees on the banking so minus 30 degrees okay and uh, I'm going to go and select these two I'm going to change the shape to box not linear this time I'm going to set the size Z to 20 I'm going to set the fall off to uh, 60 and I'm going to click on this uh, uh, this one change it to world world axis and uh, I'm just going to move this up okay Okay, but we still don't see anything at all, nothing at all. So actually, uh, in the cloner, if you go to the effectors tab, you can see the effectors is only visibility that is uh, attracting, that is only effect. So you want to take the cubes scale and drop that down. Okay, now if you go into a perspective view, we can actually see there's a little bit of change over here. So let me just uncheck this and okay, see uh, there's 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 some stuff going on. You get get that right? So actually, I'm going to go to my perspective, uh, my front view, and I'm going to increase the size of this. So I'm going to go to the fall off over here and I'm going to set the size to say something like 150. Uh, let's just set this to 200 to be safe. Uh, okay, let's actually set this to 150. That looks better. 
Okay, and now I'm going to go to the scale visibility and I'm going to click inward. And uh, I'm going to go to the scale and I'm going to hit inward as well. So now, okay, but now you can see that uh, it is still cloning every, everywhere on every side. Okay, so uh, let me see how we can fix this. <clears throat> Let's go to our options and set the level of detail to high. So we can see uh, a lot of these clones. And uh, then, uh, okay, let's check, uh, uncheck scale for a moment. And now we can see visibility. So I think scale is working perfectly. And I'm just going to go to the scale and start decrease, uh, increasing the scale value. So, so I'm going to set this to minus one. And now we can see only the letters over here. You have my point? Only this. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we want to go to our, uh, let's say, our first frame. And I'm going to again go and change the level of detail to low. And then I'm going to go and uh, go to my front view. And I'm going to play this thing. Okay. And we just, okay, so, so we just want to go to the frame where the text starts appearing. And we're going to take these two, uh, these two uh, effectors and we're going to go and drag it out. Excuse me, and we just want to put it right in the beginning of that. So I think we can go into our display options and set that to high. And now we can go our perspective view. We can press S on the keyboard. Okay, we can select the corner, press S, H. Okay, whatever. Uh, S and H is to uh, center the object. So let's just go manually and check it out. Cool. So then to get the animation running, uh, I think I'm, I'm just going to go and click on the traffic lights to hide it from the viewport because it's pissing me off. And I'm going to go into the bool over here. I'm going to select these two and I'm going to make this as a child of the cube. So now, wh wherever the cube moves, even the effect is moved. So let's go back to our front view. We can go to options, level of detail, set that to low. And now that's when we hit play. This is what we get. See that? The clones are following the reveal. Now if I go up to a perspective view, and let me just play that again. You can see the cubes there, you know, going on, 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 you know, cool. That looks amazing. It's like, it's like the cubes is what is revealing it. And obviously it's in, it's in bad quality because it's in low. Okay. Cool. That looks crazy. Uh, one thing we can do is we can go and click on the cloner. We can go and choose MoGraph effector and choose a random effector. That will randomize the clone. And I'm going to go to the position. I'm going to set that to zero, 0 for the Y. And I'm going to set the Z to uh, just 1. To get a little bit of this thing, at least I'm going to at least set that to 3. And then we're going to go to the rotation. And then we're going to go and change these numbers like math. Okay, I'm going to set this to minus 50. I'm going to set this to say something like uh, uh, 240. And I'm going to set the Z to minus uh, 125 uh, to get a little bit of random rotation over here. And uh, then we can uh, keep the random effector under the cube as well because it does not matter because there's no fall off. So uh, that is how we achieve uh, this part of the effect. Now, uh, so I'm going to go and just hide the cloner. I'm going to name this cloner uh, Cubes Review. And I'm just going to go hide this. Now, how do we get the letters coming on? So we're going to be using uh, an inheritance effector and a matrix object. So let's get on with that. Okay, so let's go and go to MoGraph and choose a matrix object. Let's uh, zoom back and where's the matrix object? Why can't I see anything? Let me just hide the bool also. Okay. This matrix object looks here. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's in uh, low quality. So I'm just going to go display, choose level of detail, and choose high, and boom. There we have our matrix object. object. I'm going to go to the coordinates. I'm going to set the Y to say something like 100. That moves it up. And I'm going to set the X axis, uh, X uh, coordinates to say something called the 500. Now that moves it to the right. Okay. Cool. And then I'm going to go to the object over here. And I'm just going to go and change these uh, count and size settings. So probably say 6, uh, 8, and 12. Let's uh, go here and uh, see what we actually have. Okay. So these are the number of counts and I'm going to increase the size. So the size basically changes the uh, spacing. So 300, 1000 and uh, say 300 again. 
Okay, that looks uh, fairly cool and awesome. Okay, so once we're done, let's just hide the matrix and let's create our letters. So we're gonna go and choose MoGraph uh, Effector. Oh, sorry, uh, not MoGraph. Uh, we're gonna go and choose a MoGraph Mo text. And uh, okay, for this purpose, I'm just gonna be using uh, say like three letters. So I'm gonna be using A, uh, B, C. Okay, and uh, again, you guys can go and I'm gonna choose some random, uh, uh, just uh, something like uh, Sego UI. Uh, okay, not some single UI. Let's let's just let's, let's choose uh, something like Moolbarn. Press S. Okay, so we have something that looks like this, and uh, we want to go and scale this down really low. Actually, let's not uh, scale it down. Let's keep it like that. We're gonna scale it down later, anyways. So we want to go and uh, click on this option called uh, where is that? Uh, let's see. Um, okay, I don't think it's there here. Okay, anyways, uh, we're gonna set the item into middle, and I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard, and then it gives me three different um, uh, extrudes so I'm gonna go right click I'm, I'm gonna click C on this I'm gonna click C on this and I'm gonna click C on this C okay and then we're gonna go and uh, select these these three right click connect objects plus delete select these three right click connect objects plus delete we're gonna select these three right click connect objects plus delete and then we're gonna take these three we're gonna drag it out we're gonna delete this null object and we're gonna go uh, delete this tag which you don't want. So now we have three separate uh, uh, three separate letters. So three separate letters. Now I'm going to go and uh, go to MoGraph. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to set the quality to low or else it's going to hang my comp seriously. So let's to low. And I'm going to go to MoGraph and choose a cloner object. I'm going to drag all these three inside the cloner object. And now we can see that it is uh, not up visible because it's uh, gone to... Uh, Low. So if I put it high, we can see it. Okay, actually, I'm gonna go and set this to medium so we can uh, quite a look at it. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to go to cloner, and actually I'm gonna go uh, to the transform objects, and I'm gonna reduce the scale of this to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. Make it pretty small. Okay, and uh, then we want to go and clone it. So what do we clone it on? We want to go and clone it on an object, and we want to clone it on the text. So we gotta go and or drop the text, and we're gonna show the distribution to surface. Okay, and we wanna go and set the count to say something like four thousand. Now, boom! We have a lot of clones, a hell lot of clones, and I think I'm gonna go and uh, set this clones to say something like uh, three thousand. I think I said 2500. Now, with with the quality set to medium, we have so many. So, if I go to options, set the level of detail to high. Excuse me, we have a lot more clones. So, I'm just going to go and set the level of detail to low for this for your sake. Okay. So, that is that. Okay. Uh, now, we want to go and uh, choose, click on the cloner. Uh, okay. I'm going to call this uh, letters. And I'm going to go and uh, go to Mo MoGraph Effector and I want to choose Inheritance Effector, Inheritance, make sure that the Letters Cloner is selected. And then we want to go and uh, we want to go to Inheritance Effector and uh, go to the uh, Effector and we want to go and drop in the Matrix object over here. Now, what is happening is if you go into Display, if, okay, let's, uh, okay, let me do one thing. Uh, I'm going to go and set the count to say something like 1000 and then I'm going to go to options set the level of detail to high so again I can explain it to you guys okay now uh, what actually is happening is it is giving the properties of the letters to the matrix so if I click on the matrix so it is kind of centering it to the axis so now to give the effect of morphing we just want to go to the matrix sorry we're going to go to the inheritance effect and we'll change to morph motion object so now, if you see here, it's cloning all those cubes with these letters over here. I mean, it's how cool is that? And uh, in inheritance mode, we just want to set that animation. No, we want to set it to direct. And now I'm going to the parameter deformer uh, coordinates. Okay, I'm going to set this to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Nope, not happening. Uh, go to letters. We want to set this to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Nope. Uh, okay, uh, select these three letters and set this to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. What? Uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay, let's control Z that. Ha! In the matrix transform, we're going to set this to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1
So point one and then point one. Acha, there is. Correct. Cool. So now uh, we have all these letters. I think I'm gonna go set this to say something like zero point five. Zero point five, zero point five. Okay, uh, let's set this to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3. Okay, that looks cool. That looks pretty simple and nice. I'm going to set this to 0 0.2. Sorry. Get it perfect. Okay. Now, uh, if I go uh, to the inheritance effector, and uh, we're going to go to the parameter. Where was that? Okay. And we want to go and uh, go to the fall off. And we want to go to the fall, fall off, and we want to set the shape to linear. Now, can you just see what's happening? Can you see that? Oh my god, it's happening. So if I move the inheritance effector, oh, oops, what's happening? Uh, what is going on? Go to the vector. Um, fall off? I don't know, not the fall off. Where am I able to see the fall off? Where the hell is the fall off? What, where, it's option, level of detail, it's high, why can't I see, ah, okay, so yeah, the fall off is pretty, pretty small over here, so what we want to do is we want to go and go to the inheritance effector, I'm going to change this uh, back to uh, 1 on the scale, so it looks pretty big, okay, and now, <clears throat> now, if I move this, we don't see any animation, so we want to go and rotate this, now, can you see that awesomeness? Awesome! I love it. Okay, and now if we move this from left to right, we see it kind of creates it. Actually, I'm going to go set this to 90 degrees, turn it on the other side. And now when we move it from left to right, you see all those letters from the matrix object are coming and cloning on to the letter. And that is brilliant, I say. I'm going to go and uh, hide the matrix for now because I don't want to see it. So I'm going to go to the interference factor. I'm going to set the uh, P rotation to 30. So we get a slanting effect. And I'm going to go into my perspective view. And I'm going to go to frame 0. And I'm just going to go and uh, hide the inheritance factor. And let's play this. Oops, there's the animation. Acha. We want to uh, uncheck the cubes reveal and the bull. Actually, we're going to go and set the options to low. And now let's play this. Okay, so we see the animation has already started. So if I zoom in here, I'm going to go and take the inheritance factor. I'm going to go and uh, set this to minus founder so it pops here. And then we want to go and uh, let's go and choose options. Let's, let's set this to high for now because we can have a better view. And I'm going to go to the, let's see, the uh, cloner cubes reveal. Okay, the letters. And let's just flow fold this. And I'm going to go to the object. And I'm going to set the count to 4,000. 4,000. Boom. So we have a hell lot of clones. So the inheritance effector. And let's move this up. And now you see it kind of starts cloning. But we want it to clone only on, uh, you know, uh, not on the whole object, only this part, and it kind of has to. So, how do we achieve that? It's very simple. Now, uh, let's actually go to the frame where it actually starts revealing. So, somewhere over here. We want to take the inheritance factor. We want to go, and I'm going to set this coordinates to zero. And we want to move it to the side like that and we're going to go take it and we're going to make it a child of the cube and then we want to go select these two effectors we want to hold down control and we want to drag them up and that creates a copy now we want to go to the cubes scale and i'm going to just call this letters scale and i'm going to come down and i'm going to call this uh, letters visibility and you want to go into the uh, letters cloner under effectors. We want to go put down the scale and the visibility. Okay. And now if we hit play, let's go back to our perspective view. I can't see anything. Okay. So again, we'll go change the level of detail to low so we can 
actually have a proper look at it and then we want to zoom in not too much let's zoom in and now we can actually see those letters coming and I cannot see the letters because we want to go into the level data to high and actually go and uh, go to the with this, this letter scale I'm going to set this to minus 1.4 Huh. Okay. Uh, now you, ac you can actually see these clones still cloning on to the object and I think I'm going to go uh, to the uh, uh, this letter scale and I'm going to go to the parameter and I'm going to set this to minus 1.1 which I have and I think I need to go increase the size of these letters so I'm going to go to the matrix object and on the transform I'm going to set this to 0 0.5 now that makes it look pretty big I think uh, let me go to the letters. I'm going to set this to 0 0.5 as well. Oh, 0 0.5 is too big. 0 0.3. Oh, God. I'm going to set it to 0 0.2 again. Okay. Now, uh, the reason why we are able to see these clones still over here is because of the uh, letters or oh, letter, letter scale and letter visibility follow. You want to go and set that to linear. Linear. Okay. Now we want to uncheck invert. And when we let's go back and oh, I really think we should set this to 0 0.1. Okay. And under letters visibility, I want to set that to invert. Uh, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so the only way we can fix it from not attaching to these letters is going to the scale and setting that to minus one. So now we can uh, go set the uh, level of real to low. We can zoom back and we can just play this animation out. So we have all the letters that's coming in and then it is merging with those cubes and we are having our crazy awesome looking logo right here. And one more thing we can do is we can go to the letters, we can go and uh, drop in the random effector. What the hell happened to the random effector? Whoops. Random effector, where did you go? Factors. Hey, random effectors. Where is the random effector? Ah, my God, random effector is right there. So we want to go and uh, drag in the random effector as well. So that gives a little bit of rotation. And then let's play this out. And now you can see the text flying in. I'm just going to hide the inheritance effector. So you know that uh, that looks really good. I mean, I really like it. So let's play that again. Okay, so now we have some issues over here. This matrix object is uh, kind of, I don't know, bulged together. Why the hell is that happening? So let's go into the object and uh, transform. Let's set this to one. Okay. So the weight down. What is going on? Wait, uh, let's uh, just go and unhide this. Let's just hide the cubes reveal for now. No, the letters, let's just hide that. Uh, okay, I think I know the problem. So I think we want to hide the matrix. We want to uncheck the letters. We want to go to options, let real high. Can we see it? Ooh, what is this? Okay, that looks crazy. Ah, there it is. So I think it was because it was in low that it used to look like that. And if I just pause in a frame, you can see these bunch of letters that are like uh, going in, you know, like forming it. Um, I think we can do one thing actually. Let's. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, let's uh, let's go 
uh, one small thing let's go to the letter scale and we'll go to the parameter and we'll set this to minus 1.4 which still gets the uh, <coughs> makes this visible on the uh, letter here and we're going to go to the uh, the visibility uncheck position we can go to the fall off and i'm just going to set the fall off to minus 50 and i'm going to go to the shape and set this to box and uh, i'm going to uncheck inward Okay, so let's actually un undo that. Let's go to the scale. I'm gonna set the parameter to minus one. Okay, that's it. So uh, that is pretty much how you create this animation, guys, in uh, Cinema 4D with some pretty cool techniques. And uh, really, thank you guys very much for watching this tutorial. And uh, I hope this guy, this tutorial is very interesting. You can learn something new. And so till then, uh, see you next time. I won't be able to make tutorials for um, for two, three weeks because I've got I'm pretty held up at the moment now. So I think this is the last tutorial for a few uh, for this month. And I hope to see you guys in other future tutorials. And if any queries, please leave a link in the description. Oh, sorry, the comment saying that um, you guys need help with any of the things you have, any problems you're facing, and I shall help you out immediately as soon as I can. Um, so like, share, comment, and subscribe. And bye.